What is up, guys? Silver prices at two-year highs. Will the rally continue? This article is from Matt Harima Das Zaks. September 3rd, 2019. It comes from Yahoo Finance. So I read a lot of the Yahoo Finance stuff, and this is an article that I kind of fell across, and I thought it was very interesting. Kind of talks about what is driving the silver prices at the moment. Kind of gives us a little bit of a prediction and some pretty cool little numbers to take into consideration. But before I get into the article, I just wanted to show you something very interesting and give you guys a couple little tips. So you guys know me with the, the Sunshine Mint Bars are my favorite. They have the built-in security feature and they are pretty close to spot. So look at this. This is a Provident Metals sold out. 10 ounce silver bars sold out. 5 ounce Sunshine Mint Bars sold out. So we got these guys and keep in mind guys, the people that are buying the silver at the moment that are coming in here and driving these prices for us, the gold and the silver prices are not silver or gold stackers. They are temporarily here just until China and the U.S. come up with a, a plan that makes sense and stop throwing around these ridiculous tariffs and ridiculous amounts of money. So once the market proves once again that it's a little more level or stable, I think a lot of these guys are going to be out of the gold and silver game. And they don't care about numismatic stuff. They don't care how pretty something is. They just want bulk. So the 10 ounce is a great size. If you notice, the kilos are not sold out. But the 5 ounce and the 10 ounce, 10 ounce are. Because they know when they have to get out of the silver market, it's going to be very difficult to sell 20 kilo bars. But it, in order to sell maybe like 100 10 ounce bars will not be as bad. So they know that. So the 10 ounce size is probably my favorite because you get a, a nice amount of silver, a pretty close to spot, you get that volume discount, and also the five ounce is very nice. So if you notice that those are the two that are sold out, the one ounce round is not sold out. The one ounce sunshine mint bars are not sold out. So make sure you're taking notes because this is a small taste of when the time is right to sell your silver. You know, I if you're in it for the long haul, I obviously you don't want to be selling your silver right now. But if there is a huge spike in price and the time is right as far as you're ready to sell, you're ready to retire and all that stuff, whatever you're you're stacking for, pay attention right now because this stuff is the stuff you're going to want to buy. This is the stuff that they are buying. They're buying the 5 ounce sunshine mint bars. They're buying the 10 ounce sunshine mint bars and I'm sure they're buying other things, but you got to pay attention to what they're buying because that is what you're going to want to buy because you're going to have no issue liquidating it. Even though silver is very liquid, you want to make it even more liquid, as liquid as you possibly can. So that's just my little advice to you. Just pay attention to what's being sold, what's being bought, and um, you'll have an idea of what will be popular during a bull run like we're seeing right now so anyways let's get to this article enough rambling i'm gonna read it over maybe throw in a couple little things little thoughts in between so here we go silver is on a roll this year with prices trending above 18 dollars an ounce uh levels last seen in 2017 so once again two year highs the metal has gained 11.26 percent over the past month outshining gold 5.8 percent the rally can be attributed to a dovish fed safe haven demand triggered by the latest tit for tat tariffs by the united states and china and concerns over the global economic outlook well the global economy huh you know that it's only a matter of time before that whole ordeal comes down on to gold and silver that's also something that's gonna be massive for the prices of gold and silver once i just think the world economy is way worse than what we are being exposed to what they're showing us what they're i mean i think it's really bad but anyways let's keep going on august 23rd china hiked tariff on u.s goods worth 75 billion and announced it will raise import duties 
on U.S.-made autos and auto parts. In retaliation, President Trump raised the tariffs to 30% from 25% on Chinese goods worth $250 billion and 15% from 10% on other products worth $300 billion. So that's what I'm saying. These are insane numbers. I mean, any anybody that has a lot of money invested into the markets, the stock market and stuff, would be terrified to just continually watch the market get pounded month over month and these insane amounts of money that are just being placed in tariffs and all this. It's, it's terrifying. And <clears throat> silver and gold, that's what they do. They are the safe haven. So <laughs> that's what's going on right now. But like I said, all it would take is for them to make strike up a deal that makes a lot more sense or for the markets to start recovering or anything like that. And all these guys that are buying up tons and tons of silver and gold are out. They're out. And that will give us that silver pullback. Um, I personally would like to see silver come back down. I'm not ready to, to sell and I still want a lot more. So, you know, these prices are not, you know, ideal to be buying, but I still think you should be buying. You should never really stop buying because if it continues to go up, you know, I'm not an expert and a lot of these guys that write these articles can't predict what's going to happen. We get an idea from these articles, but they still can't predict it. And you don't want to be caught with your pants down and not buying because you thought it was too high. And then all of a sudden it continues to go up. So you weren't buying at 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 dollars. But then all of a sudden silver reaches 30 and you just missed out on all those potential gains. So you want to be continually buying and just kind of maybe passively uh, buying a little slower or a little bit less, but never stop. So that's what I'm doing at the moment as well. Just kind of slowing down a little bit, but I'm still buying. There's no way I'm stopping. Stock markets took a dive on apprehensions that elevated tariffs uh, will add to global economic weakness. The 10-year Treasury note yield declined below 2%. Sales on new U.S. homes witnessed a drop of 12.8% to 635,000 new homes in July from June's revised rate of 728,000 and projected figure of 647,000 units. So far this year, new home sales have risen just 4.1%, reflecting an ongoing weakness in the housing market despite the reduction in mortgage rates. It is hard to buy a home, at least in Florida, the cost of living in general in Florida has gotten ridiculous. And I'm sure there's a lot of states that are kind of feeling that same thing. I know California is up there. New York is up there. Um, and the cost of living is just, it's crazy. And to buy a home is actually pretty difficult. Here in Florida, at least, we have programs that can help people buy these homes. But the thing is, you know, you have the power, you have the water, you have the groceries, which is become so ridiculously expensive and you know for a slab of meat is just like what the heck so expensive and mortgages are still really you know expensive <laughs> so i know florida is one of those states that is difficult to buy a home to be a homeowner is very difficult here in, in florida um feel free to add anything in the comments i'm sure there's other states that i'm missing Another factor that has been working in favor of silver lately is subdued demand for gold. In India, owning um, ooh, demand for gold in India, owning to gold prices at six-year high. Most consumers sold their physical gold holdings to capitalize on the higher gold prices and opted for silver. All these developments led to silver gaining 17.8% so far this year. So uh, basically, that is people playing the gold to silver ratio. If you guys remember, at one point, it was like 100 to 1. So the, the ratio was way, 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 way lopsided. And I actually thought about playing the ratio too, but I, I didn't. And a lot of people that did play that gold to silver ratio at the right time, they made a great move because silver is now starting to close that gap and the ratio is starting to 
kind of look a little more normal. Just so you know, the usual gold to silver ratio, and there's no real norm, I guess. You know, in any market, there's no real norm. But 50 is usually where you want it to be, and we were seeing 100. So for every one ounce of gold, you could get 100 ounces of silver. So imagine they did that at that time. They traded in one ounce of gold, got 100 ounces of silver. Now you have the gap closing. The ratio could turn into, you know, whatever. Let's just say it goes back to normal, 50. And they basically trade their silver back into gold. And they just keep doing that over and over. And you're getting all this free gold and silver just from playing the ratio. So, yeah, you trade in 50 ounces of silver. You get one ounce of gold. And then you wait for that ratio to spread once again. And you just keep doing it. You go right back and you trade your gold into silver. And you just keep doing that. And it kind of does work. You just, the timing needs to be right. And, um, you know, you just got to be patient. It's, it's, a long, it's a long game. So what next for silver? Silver's unrivaled characteristics make it indispensable for many in industrial products. In fact, industrial ap applications account for roughly 60% of the global silver consumption. And that's one of the best things about silver, uh, 60%. Just think about that, 60% of industrial applications. That's a lot. That is, um, I mean, they, <laughs> you know, talk about uh, being one of the most relied on metals, 60%. So just keep that in mind. And I think that's actually going to grow from 60%, believe it or not. The, I know a lot of the solar panels are taking up a lot of silver too. And solar panels panels are starting to become a thing. I know California, I think, put a law that you need solar panels on your home by 2021 or something like that. Uh, growing industrial activity will sustain silver demand. India is expected to be one of the largest silver consumers in 2019. Notably, silver imports rose 35% year over year to around 225 million ounces in 2018 in the country. Demand in jewelry fabrication, which accounts for approximately one-fifth of total silver demand, is expected to witness solid growth in 2019. And I think that silver, if the silver gets a little more expensive, believe it or not, I think that will actually drive even more jewelry sales. I think because silver is considered the cheaper metal, you know, if you compare it to gold, um, you know, if silver goes up in price, I think that's only going to help it as far as jewelry goes. Uh, this last little paragraph right here is very interesting too. So, however, silver mine production fell 2% in 2018, the third consecutive year-on-year -year drop. And is, exp and is anticipated to decline 2% in 2019. This can be attributed to the absence of development of new projects, declining ore grades, and depleting reserves. Consequently, a potential silver deficit is imminent, which is in turn sets the stage for higher silver prices in the long haul. Now, that last sentence especially is... I mean, if we see a, um, a shortage in silver, which a lot of guys on YouTube have been talking about for a very, very long time, um, that is just going to – silver will explode. 60% of the industrial market relies on, um, on silver – or I'm sorry, 60% of silver usage is – what was that sentence? Uh, right here. In fact, industrial applications account for roughly 60% of global silver consumption. You have 60% that are relying on this silver. And uh, just imagine we all of a sudden hit some sort of deficit, some sort of shortage. It would just blow silver up through the roof. And it's only going to go up every single year as technology is getting more complex, more popular. Everybody, you know, it's, it, it's just... The stage is set, just like it says, for silver to go through the roof. And it's very exciting, guys. Very exciting time for silver, for sure. Um, like I said, though, you know, my advice to you guys with all these prices and two-year highs and all this stuff, just keep buying at your own leisure. 
I, if you were buying maybe like 10 ounces a month, maybe slow down, get down to five ounces a month, just till we see what happens. You know, whenever there's huge spikes and just, you know, silver has made these incredible leaps and bounds over the past couple months, you got to realize that there's eventually going to be a pullback. It's just the way things work. And we just got to wait for that. So don't go crazy buying more when silver is performing the way it is. You want to actually slow down, especially if you're in the long, you're in it for the long haul. Now, if any, I know I have a lot of um, investment minded people that listen to my channel. If you're one of them and just kind of trying to make your money and get out, then, uh, you know, you might have missed the best chance for that. Uh, obviously, when silver was in the 14, 15 range would have been the best case scenario, but that would have been a long term investment flip. So I don't know if you would have gotten in that early. The next kind of stop or the next place you could have bought to make some decent money if you put a lot of money into silver would have been in the 17 range when silver kind of held there for a little bit. That would have been another opportunity. I think if you want to make a quick buck on this recent bull market, I think you might have missed your chance if you're in it for investing. But that's just my opinion. So anyways, guys, make sure you put your comments down below. Thank you so much for checking it out and listening to my rambling. I really appreciate it. And um, I will talk to you guys later.